Yeah, Norman was, uh, he was a well-known, kind of famous missionary. He wrote Reese House, the Intercessor. It's a Love favorite that. intercession book for intercessors. I mean, really famous. Um, I think it's Lou Engel's favorite book. I think Lou told me that once. Man, if that you know who Lou is, is so Lou's a real yeah. intercessor. I've so. read it like three times. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's so funny, um, that Paul, because people read that and they... They usually get condemned because what the Lord asked Reese Howells to do, you know, is so over the top that Christians get all, you know, condemned. Oh, I could never do that. I could never live a life like Man, how did he do sure that? you sure could. You know, that's, but, but, you know, a lot of people read it and they get all condemned like they, they couldn't. I yeah. told someone who voted, someone who read it too, and he had a different take and I was so surprised. And it was about him giving up his kids, right? Oh. And there's like certain levels where, but yeah, you know, you you be obedient to what God's called you to do. You know what they you know? they don't. If you read the book, you know what he says in the book was when the Holy yeah. Spirit came to him one night and said, "I uh, would you do this for me? Would you lay your life down in this way for me?" And and Reese said to the Lord, "Oh no, I I couldn't do that. No way." I can't do that. You know, he said, well, I'm going to come back at midnight or something like that for your answer. So, so, yeah. so at midnight, the Lord yeah. comes to him and some, and says, okay, will you do this for me? And he says, no, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not willing. I can't mm -hmm. do it. And he said, well, are you willing to be made willing? Wow. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. And so over a period of time, the Lord, the Holy Spirit worked that yeah, in. Yeah, and that's the story and he did of that. it, really. Yeah. yeah, so the point is, it wasn't Reese that did it, the Holy Spirit who yeah. lived through him, who enabled him to do it, what he couldn't do. Yeah. But everyone thinks, oh, I've got to try to do that. Well, none of us could really do it. Yeah. Apart well, from through Jesus. intercession, he changed the face of World War II. That's right, yeah. You know, he changed history for yeah. all. Yeah. Like, who's the Reese Howell at the war they're pushing right now, World War Three? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is there going to be a reset? Yeah, is yeah. Is there going to be yeah. intercessors yeah. that come in and... Stand in the gap. Stand in the gap, yeah. For yeah. Europe. Wow. And that's what he did. Wow. Yeah, yeah well, when, when Norman first came to the Vineyard Christian Fellowship, that's where I first encountered him. I, I, uh, I don't know, probably most of you weren't here. I shared once a little bit about this. At Tom's meeting, I don't know when was that, Tom? How yeah, many we got months it ago? online. It's online. If you ever yeah. just want to hear it, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Right? So, so on YouTube? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so <clears throat> he was the first man I ever encountered. At first, I didn't know what I was looking at. He was in his 80s then, and he was the first, what I would say now, living mystic I'd ever run into. Of course, that mystic term mystic freaks people out. I always, I always tell people, really, everyone's a mystic. Where's this Jesus you say you know? Where is he? Oh, I don't know. Well, you're a mystic. You're believing in something and someone that you can't see. You know, so really, everyone's really in some sense a mystic. But, uh, but Norman, when you were around him, he was, he was just experiencing Christ in him. He would, and, uh, he, and, and no one would really recognize it. He'd be passed out. In the, he'd be like this. Oh man, that's so hard. Just like this, and I'm thinking, that. and I and everyone's out talking, yapping, and I thought, I want to be, I want that, what that guy has. I want to go over there, so I just go over and sit in a chair, and he'd be passed out. And then someone would come up to him and say, Oh, oh, um, Norman, you must be tired. Oh, he'd pop no, up. My oh no, my dear, I like to imitate him because he was British. <laughs> oh no, my dear. I'm feeding on living bread. And they said, oh, that's nice for that old man to say that. And I thought, no, he's actually doing that. <laughs> I, I, could, I just knew he was doing it, even though I didn't know anything. You know, and, and uh, they said, oh, yeah. how are you, Norman? Oh, I don't know, my dear, I just am. Mm -hmm. You know, or I live drunk, my dear. And I, they said, oh, that's nice again. And I thought, he is drunk. He's completely drunk. And, and so back then, you didn't, you didn't run into too many people who were experiencing drunkenness or anything like that. Anyway, so anyway, he was quite a quite a blessing. And I um, so anyway, when he came to the vineyard, 
I, I burned out on, on trying to live the Christian life. Um, you know, and, and the vineyard wasn't doing it. They, it was really a church of real grace. Ken Gullickson, the founder of the vineyard, who later gave it to John Wimber. Ken is just, was just incredible. And Tom knew Ken too and, and, and knew of him. And I think, did, I don't know if you met, did you ever meet him personally, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> that you did. So, so Ken said this that Tom and I both heard. Tom's the only the other person I know that remembered this except maybe, I think, Christine at the reunion. Uh, but anyway, um, Ken said, Christ is the real you. He's the real you in you. Mm. And then one time he said, Christ is in you as you. I thought, what? All three of those things, I thought, what? What was that? And I, I kind of liked it, but I, I didn't get it at all. But I, And Tom heard the same thing. And, and I thought, what is that? <laughs> And, and so um, that started me trying to follow him around when I heard he was speaking in the area or something. He'd come out and he gave a, uh, a thing to all the vineyard pastors when he was out there. And I went to the meetings and again, I was just like, I didn't even get what he was kind of saying. But I, I guess who he was spoke so loudly, I couldn't hear what he was saying. Um, you know, who he was, he, what do they say? Who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. It's, mm. a, it's a certain saying. He was a silent lecture. He, just who he was, he was just being, which is the final stage of this, of the union here, where you end up just being. But anyway, I'll explain that. But anyway, he was just being. And, um, and so people were drawn by that. The spirit was just, flooding him and, and, and touching people. And, they didn't, and so he'd have this crowd of people all around him and he'd be sitting there late, sitting there in the chair, passed out, mm. feeding on an inner Jesus. That's which all the mystics, Catholic mystics primarily I'm thinking of, uh, experienced. Um, and so I was kind of drawn to that and that, uh, at that time, I was burning out, like I said. I, I'll just mention this to you. I said this in my earlier meeting. Um, I was going to leave the church, but I, I didn't want to tell too many people and, and hurt anybody's feelings because I didn't want to blame anyone and and because uh, I was laying a lot of the condemnation on myself. Plus, there'd be a few legalistic, probably, brothers and sisters, well-meaning, uh -huh. who were, well, you just need to be doing this more. You need to be doing that more. And I, And I was so burned out, I thought, and I never, I just said, thank you. And I thought, I can't go that way. I have nothing left in me. I can't do it anymore. And so I, I was walking into a Christian bookstore, the last place I wanted to be in Westwood, California. I walk in, and it's kind of where the Bible says he walks in us. It's like somebody else was walking in me. That's the only way I can describe it. Because I, I, I didn't want to go into the bookstore. And all of a sudden I found myself walking in the bookstore. Why? How am I, why am I walking in this bookstore? And I looked at the book rack, and this title of the book was Not I, But Christ. Mm. And it seemed like the not I jumped out at me. I, I kind of, what was that? Not, and so I pulled the book out by Watch My Knee, and I, I just opened it. I, actually, at that point, I didn't even know who Watch My Knee was, but I just opened it to the best chapter of the book, which is called Our Life, and and Watchman Nee said something I'd never heard anybody say before, and he said the great news of the gospel was that not only has he delivered you from, um, not only did he die for you, but he lives for you. Not, as, not only is he your substitute in death, he's your substitute in life. Um, he's delivered you from living. I, I thought, what? <laughs> so he goes on in the whole chapter, and he kept repeating that, you guys, because Watchman he knew the value of repetition, and he kept saying, he's delivered you from living. And I thought, but I thought I had to live the Christian life. I thought it was up to me. That was my whole thing, and I realized I couldn't do it. And so I thought it was all over for me. There was no hope left. 
And then he said, yeah, there's one last hope, and that's Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's the one that lives the life you can't live. And not only is the Christian life impossible, to, difficult to live, it's impossible. And there's only one person that can live it, and that's Jesus Christ through you. Mm. Well, I, you guys, I, I never heard anything like that. And um, some people call it the exchange life or the replaced life. But I, I, I just I hadn't heard that, and it kind of gave me a little hope. Oh, you know that you're saying that somebody else is, is lives the life. I thought it was up to me, and uh, I had no idea that I was crucified with Christ. That whole thing I had hadn't heard that yet, which Norman was gonna bring. And so that that Sunday morning when Norman came to the vineyard, he waddles up there, and I was thinking when I saw him waddling up there, you guys, I thought. Maybe I should sneak out of here. Because here comes this old man. And he's just kind of waddling up there. And I thought, oh, my goodness. Is that the, is that the English guy? The English guy. Is yeah. It? Yeah, he was coming. Ken Gullickson invited him. And, and I was about to leave the church. But I, for some reason, I came that Sunday. And I was right up front. And I saw this guy. Well, Ken's in, introducing the speakers, this well-known guy. And here I look at him. He's kind of waddling up there. And it's kind of like, See, this looks like this is going to be a bummer. Maybe I was going to just slip out here because I just wasn't, I didn't think anything would help me. So Norman got up, and this is what he said. Um, he said, um, it's never becoming something. It's containing someone. Self-improvement is the greatest lie in the church today. Ooh. Now, I didn't even get it. I, I thought, what? <laughs> I, I'm always, I was always saying with them, what? And it, something went off inside me. You know, I, my, my spirit leapt inside me. Even though I didn't know what I was hearing. I, and I remember thinking, would you please say that again? But he didn't. So he gave the cup of coffee analogy. And the cup of coffee was this. He said, it's like a cup of coffee on a kitchen counter. Sorry if I'm belaboring this for anybody who was here the night I shared some of this, but anyway, I find sometimes it's good to go over things anyway because we all get more light on things. But anyway, he said it's like a cup on a kitchen counter, a cup of coffee. And he said, what is the function of a cup? And I thought, well, it receives the coffee. It takes the coffee. And he said, yeah, the, the sole function of a human is to, con is to receive and to contain. It's receiving, it's not achieving. And he went on to, so he said, you know, um, so, so the cup is us, the human, the coffee is Jesus Christ. And he says, said the, the cup is trying to become the coffee. In other words, mm -hmm. the coffee is, the love, the peace, the power, mm. the sanctification, the redemption, all the fruit of the Spirit, um, the righteousness is all a person, and that person is Jesus Christ, and he's the coffee in the cup. But unfortunately, the cup is trying to become like the coffee, or trying to become the coffee, <laughs> but the human only capacity is to receive the coffee and eventually express the coffee, which is a clearer expression as a branch and a vine. You know, the, the, the branch expresses the vine. So the branch isn't trying to be, try to be like the vine and the branch isn't trying, asking the vine to help him out. The branch is just the united to the vine and the vine is just living through the branch and the the fruit is appearing on on the branch well and think about the coffee the coffee cup is hard right yes sturdy and strong which is good but with us that can go either way <laughs> right because there's also a satan in our free will so when, when we're here we're strong mm -hmm. i'm strong enough to receive you god i have the strength to endure you and the trials or, you know what, forget this, it's my strong will 
I'm walking away, like you were saying earlier, are you willing, when God said, are you willing to be willing? Right. And that's the battle that we have. So it's kind of an interesting analogy so that we can receive. Yeah, we can't be the coffee necessarily, no. but we can receive it all. Right. And then at least maybe be transformed by it. Hopefully. Right. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. He, <coughs> he, he, so, you know, when someone might come to you and say, oh, gosh, you, you look more like Jesus or something uh -huh. like that, you know? And I said, well, secretly I think to myself, yeah, people do sometimes. Because <laughs> it's him in them, releasing and re manifesting out through them. So it's him releasing through the person. That's why they're looking more like Jesus. It's not them trying to, trying to somehow try to be holy or try to be more patient or try to be more loving. You know, it's it's him in them. And so he he said those things, and that was good of what you said about the cup. The yeah, the cup. To know you're a cup, a vessel. You guys, the Bible says we're cups, we're vessels mm -hmm. of wrath, or we're vessels of mercy. Mm -hmm. And so. To know that you're a weak vessel, that you don't have what it takes, that that it's the coffee in the cup will cost you everything, you guys. It'll really cost you everything. That's what I discovered. Yeah. I got really hammered in my life in trying to be the incredible Christian and trying to do all the right stuff and be holy and be this and be that. And I just mm -hmm. kind of wore, wore out where I just... So now, now I, I tell people, if anything, I'm a helpless expression of someone else. Mm -hmm. Someone else is living, and I'm I'm just the helpless expression. But I'm I am expressing, hopefully, him. So um, so so Norman said, "Is the cup running around the kitchen counter on its own?" Ah. And I thought, no, no, it's because it has no power in and of itself. It's the power is the coffee. It doesn't have, so as vessels, we have no power yeah. in and of ourselves to live the life or to produce one thing. He, he does it through us. And some, some people say, well, well, no, I live the Christian life, but he's helping me. And I said, gosh, wow. I didn't find that to be true. <laughs> you know, I, you know I, and I, sometimes people say, well, Jesus is my co-pilot kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I'm thinking, I'm I'm somewhere back in the luggage rack, <laughs> I, I you know because I, I I cannot he's driving he's flying the plane yeah I'm just kind of oh <laughs> he's carrying me so anyway so um yeah you guys so that so the cup of coffee thing was so pivotal f for me uh, I just thought oh, it just flashed on my mind the bracelets what would Jesus do. So people, you know, people have those bracelets. I used to have one. What would Jesus do? And so I'd say, oh, I guess I gotta try to be like this. I gotta try to be like that. And then after hearing Norman, it was, oh, this is what Jesus will do. He'll do for you what you can't do for yourself. Amen. He'll, 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 so it was so liberating, you guys, to start trusting in another. So it wasn't trying. In fact, when someone, one of the vineyard pastors asked Norman, shouldn't you try to live the Christian life? He said, oh, no, my dear. Trying is the devil. He said, it's not trying, it's trusting in another, my dear. So all these one-liners, he would say, you guys would just go off in me and started kind of liberating me a little bit from my own effort, human efforts, to try to live the life I couldn't live. And it gave me some hope, oh, Okay, I, I can trust you. So when you, you guys, when you look at the chart up there, um, I'm just trying to think if uh, there was anything else I wanted to tell you about that initial time. Um, yeah, he, I'll just tell you this because it's so much fun. I'd just like to say it because you'll love the story, I think. All the vineyard pastors were there and, and one pastor asked him, well, Norman, shouldn't we try to live the Christian life? And his response is, oh, no, my yeah. dear. Trying is the devil. And he gave the scripture in Romans 7, when I would do good, evil is present with me. And, and of course, he went on to explain, when you trying to do good apart from Jesus is really the devil, because there's only one good and one who does good. 
you know, and and uh, and if you try to do good apart from him, it's really Satan expressing himself temporarily through the vessel. Even even Satan in in uh, Isaiah fourteen says, "I will be like the Most High." Doesn't that sound that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? He said, "I'm going to be like the Most High." So that sounds like a good thing. It was really an evil thing. You know, I'll be my own independent person and I'll be like God. So that spirit can get through even believers today. Um, So Norman would say, keep the heat on God. If you're a mess, tell him you're his mess and it's his fault and he better do a better job. So that's what he told all the vineyard pastors. I'd never heard anything like this in my life because most of what I heard was it's up to me, mm-hmm. or at least that's what I interpret everything. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's my own condemning ways with myself. And so I, I would just think it's up to me. So the first, the first uh, stage is being, it says, a wrong self. And that's from Ephesians 2, and that's, The verse says, you once walked according to the prince of the power of the air, Uh, the spirit, this is, this is a big thing, you guys, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience and were by nature children of wrath. So, so that's saying in Ephesians that you were being operated by a spirit of error, E-R-R-O-R but you didn't know you were being operated and you thought you were just being yourself. So you see at the bottom, it says just me operate as, as if I am just me, I'm just me living life, doing my own thing, captain of my own ship, directing my life. Mm -hmm. And you have, and the world has no idea they're being operated by another spirit, a self for self for self spirit that's operating through them as them, as if it were them, Mm -hmm. disguised as them. Yeah, you guys, so so don't we think, before we're Christians, don't we think we're, I'm just, I just thought I was just Bill Bauer, I'm just Bill, living life, struggling away. (laughs) Operating as I am. Operating as I am. Never knew I was not operating myself. Mm-hmm. Operated by another spirit, Satan. Yeah, spirit of air. Yeah, who was deluding me <laughs> into thinking anyway. Yeah, that I was just me with my own life. So you, you become a Christian, you guys, and so then you slip into the next stage, and so that so now you're in the deluded self the trying stage and this is where you think you're still just you but you you think you're just you with a life of your own and a subtly a power of your own and so that's why you see do you see the 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 c letter there Mm -hmm. um so so it's so so now you've got christ in your life but do you see Christ and a big I? Do you mm-hmm. see the big I? Mm-hmm. So most people, when they think of Christ in me, um, what they really think is Christ plus a big performing me. Mm. So, so is the other tiny I in the C? Christ and I? Yeah, so... Or I in Christ. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I in Christ. Um, but lowercase c. Yeah, I'm trying to, now I can't remember, I haven't done this for a while. Um, yeah, just the point is, you're, you're now, you're, you're in a union, you don't know you're in a union at all. Uh, but in that union, you're the focused. You think you're the one that's living the life. Right, you're by, just, the cap, by the capital I. Yes, by the capital I, yes, uh-huh. You're, you're living the life, and it's a big inflated you that thinks you can live the life. And so you think you're sufficient to live it, and you're the victorious Christian. And so you're going to try to do this and try to do that, and, and you're living out of a lie. 
Is that the whole chapter of Romans 7? Uh, it is. It's the whole chapter of Romans 7. It is. Yep. He's, yeah, he is trying everything. So, so you're, so I guess this is the key, you guys. This is tricky. It comes by revelation, really. Um, you've never been an independent self. This was Norman's major revelation. What does that mean? You thought you were just you by yourself before you were born again. But you weren't just you. You were, you had another spirit operating through you mm -hmm. and as you, in a sense, united to you. Not the same as a union with Christ, but, but he's there united to and you're, he's disguising himself. You jump into the Christian life and you think, still, you're just you. But you've got Christ out here helping you. And, and, but mainly the focus is on just you. And I can live the Christian life. I've got to try to do all these things. I've got to try to be the good Christian. I, that was me. I tried to be the incredible Christian, love everyone, greet everyone, try to get holy, try to get more holy, more righteous, all that kind of stuff. And so... I was this inflated I, which in Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. That I, in Galatians 2.20, was crucified. That inflated I, ego, is what Tom and I heard from Ken Gull Gullickson said. The I means ego, ego. That was crucified. Now, that really, what was crucified was, this is tricky, was that deluded I is really Satan. So the, you thinking you're just independent is really a lie. <laughs> you're a dependent Christian. You're not independent. You're dependent on another. You're, you're living by the life of another. You're not trying to live by your own life with Christ helping you. You're in a union where you're living by the life of someone else who's living in you. And as you'll hear me say a little later on, Norman said, living in you, as you. I'd never heard that. As me. As if it's you, but it's really him. He's the one living in such a union that you're one. As you. And so, so here, so you're trying and you're trying and you're trying in the second stage and that's burning you out. And so slowly, because of your trying, so what I usually tell people, well, Bill, sh shouldn't I try? And I always say, yeah, try until you're bloody trying. Do you think that it's a little bit of, again, part of a challenge of the Christian walk is when it says in Philippians, though, see? And some of these Christians say, well, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me, so hey, I can fly that plane. I can do this because Jesus, so see, now, it, it, and I'm not trying to be the argument, but it No, just I've got an answer, yeah. The valid example that, yes. you know, it's, yes, it's a given that we can't do anything with that. We get that. But, you know, not everyone has that calling to do the plane either. So then the Christian feels at times like a failure. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I screwed up because it's, if it says this and it's not me, the ego shrinking, God, where are you? Because you're with me. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's, it's interesting. And sometimes, I think sometimes, you know, I hasten to say this, but this is where sometimes I think the church, I, it, it's subject to interpretation, isn't it? Because there wouldn't be so many denominations how their messages get conveyed. Right. And Christians have problems with it. Because on the way over, I was just thinking, you know what? Man, you know, as far as even the World War, World War Three and all these prayers and stuff, and I'm thinking, why are we the minority? There's no reason for this. Mm -hmm. If it's like as well as it's the best thing out there, the true living Christ, we should at least be half of the world's population, at least. You know, and it's because I think of either politics or just other Christian politics that kind of get in the way to where, hey, we got to fulfill our calling and what God has us to do, whatever that individually is. And it's okay if we don't do it. It's really just being, let ourselves be engulfed by that coffee. Yeah, I think you know? you're right. That's it. 
that's it. And I was just going to say in response to that scripture, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can do all those things when he's strengthening us. Ah, so excellent as he's strengthening us, we can do whatever thing, mm -hmm. you know, but the key is, <laughs> the key is, what is the real I? That's what we're getting to. Who's the real I here? You know, it's, if, if it's an independent I, I can, I can do all things. Yep. It's, it's going to be a real problem. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, because it's you in, in your flesh energies trying to do something that's probably the devil influencing you, and mm -hmm. it won't go that well. Yeah. But flesh. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 you, so you get burned out. So it's mm -hmm. a, through all this, and people are in this stage for a long time, yeah. you guys, because they keep trying and keep trying and keep failing and failing and... And so there's a death to the self-sufficiency where you just, all is up to you and you just can't seem to do it anymore. And, and uh, so then you see a cross in the middle of it there and that's kind of a, where you died in a sense. And you guys having a revelation just that you died is a major thing. What can a dead man do? Yeah. You know, can a dead man improve himself? Can he... Can he repent? Can he um, change himself? Can he get more holy? Can so just because some people do get a revelation that they died, and that's a, that's an incredible thing to get that. That can take you a long way, but you you kind of as you're going through this, finally you start looking to Jesus more. You start, oh Lord, you're living in me, so you mean I can start trusting you to live the life. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ. And you seem to disappear. So in the third stage, you kind of, all of a sudden, your focus kind of gets off of you trying to live the life and being self-centered. And, um, and you start looking to Jesus as the, you might say, oh, maybe you can live the life through me. I'm going to... Maybe I'm going to trust you to do it. And you, in a sense, almost, that's where it says no independent self. You start realizing you're not an independent self. Uh, you might even start to realize you're a dependent self, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you kind of disappear. It disappear in a sense of, I can't do it anymore. I'm going to look to you, Jesus. I'm going to keep trusting in you. I, I cannot live this life. And you kind of disappear and sometimes I remember in this stage, I thought to myself, but what happened to Bill? Mm -hmm. but, you, but at that point, I didn't have this clear. I, I didn't even care about Bill. I didn't want to be Bill because I, I had this shame, this condemnation. I was just gr gr glad that somehow Jesus was my life and he was the one living. And it took all the stress off me and I started entering a rest because I, oh, gosh, you mean I can just rest, tr depend on you, rest in you, Lord. You can live the life I can't live. And, and then I remembered the Watchman Nee thing. He's delivered you from living. And he lives the life you can't live for yourself. And so I started, and I entered a, a really time of rest, you guys. And you see, uh, and you started realizing that Christ is your sufficiency. Resurrection. So all of a sudden... When you die, the, res the resurrection starts happening in your life. Out of death comes resurrection. So his life starts coming up. And you start operating, it says, as Christ by faith. What does that mean? You, you start realizing that Christ is the real you. I almost thought, it's Christ going to teach my tennis lessons. It's Christ going to the grocery store. It's, it's Christ uh, uh, doing my accounting. It's Christ living, and you, and it was just a kind of wonderful, and that's where you get the big C, the big C there, and the little I, because you go to the background, and Christ comes to the foreground, so now your trust is in another, in Jesus, to do what you cannot do anymore. And like the one before, is the I was, the big I was in the foreground. Right. The little C, Christ was not in the foreground. Exactly. Not in the foreground. Yeah. The big eye was in the foreground. Exactly.
I like that V, you know, it's like a descent, a descent going yes. down, it hits the point, that's the point of death. Right. And it's only, resurrection Resurrection is can only happen if there's a death. It's a, res, it's, it's a byproduct of death. Yeah, exactly, bro, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, I tell you, it, it t- takes some hard knocks. I know we've all been through some difficult times, you guys, but... You know, I've shared this with people in the past, and they're kind of more in the new new believers. They're all excited. Of course, I don't say anything to discourage them, and they're all the victorious Christians. I'm going to take the, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bring in the revival. I'm going to, what's that, Paul? The seven mountains. The seven mountains. Yes, I'm going to take the mountains. I'm going to do all this, you know. And so they're really in the second stage here, um, you know, thinking they can live the life maybe with Jesus' help. You know, and so the eye is is the really big eye. So they, I always tell people, they jump too quickly to the resurrection side of the cross. You know, they bypass the deaths of the death side. So, so in your own experience, you usually go through mm-hmm. something in your life where you can't handle it. Yeah. You know, if you haven't yet, you'll find something that you just can't—a thorn in the flesh or some difficulty. A relationship or or you know whatever it might be that really takes you takes you out <laughs> and you pray those crazy prayers like we heard in the beginning days like lord deal with me bring me burn me up let your fire come and <laughs> deal with me lord and then next thing you know you go through all these like why did i pray that prayer well you wanted that but the end totally. result you know the end result that's like a fast track you know, those prayers Say, Lord, <laughs> no, it's a fast track prayer of, of death, a fast track death, death prayer. Okay, you want you you know, to deal with it? Tom, I was such a wimp when people would pray those prayers. This one guy, Brian, who would pray that, deal with me, whatever you have to do. And I'd always say, Lord, I, I don't agree with that prayer. But <laughs> would you do it gently with me? I, yes. I'd always pray the opposite. Because <laughs> I was just a big scaredy cat and wimp. Yeah, we're all like, see. whatever it takes, Lord, just... Burn me up, Lord. I remember I was like this. Like, I want the fire. got to just burn me to Christmas. Oh, my God. Did you pray that time? I was like intense on that. I was like, man, I was praying, Lord, burn me. I was like. Oh, wow. And you really went through it. Wow. Tom really went through it. I mean, it, God used it, but totally. But um, yeah, bro. I mean, uh, it still happens, to too, but God's do- we doing it. To- you have to die of these things, right? This is, this is what I would say is um, Jesus on the cross, um, died he died things. as you. Yeah. He died the death. He died his death for you as you, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, so there are things in our life that come our way and, and, and the temptation is to think I've got to, I've got to try to die to that. Yeah. So now we're back to independent self, mm. <clears throat> thinking we have to try to die to that thing, yeah. rather than recognizing, oh, Lord, you already, you you say reckon yourself dead to that. You you die. I died to sin. So I'm instead of saying, because I was went for a walk on the other night and I was had these emotions, whatever they were. Um, but one of them was comparison. So I said, comparison, I die to you right now. But I'm already dead to comparison. You're already dead to it. Okay. Right, right, exactly, yeah. Chris. Yeah, it's like a comparison is like a man, the man comparison is smacking a corpse. Yeah. The corpse is dead. It's like, you can smack, comparison can smack me 50 times. I'm not going to respond. I'm dead. So, yeah. And Lord, and... When this temptation or the thing coming at me, you're living in me. You're handling this. Uh, I can't handle it, but Lord, you're handling it. You're taking. You're the love for this hatred I feel for that person. You're the holiness for this feeling of lust. You're the. You're my patience for the anxiety that I'm feeling. You know, and and uh, but you're right. The finished work he. He already terminated that stuff. So you stand there and see the salvation of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit in his time, in his way, Chris, will give you in your experience a deliverance of it. You know, but it's not 
but suddenly we could put it back on us. I'm just Bill and I've got to try to deal with this on my own. That's independent self. That's really the spirit of error, Satan himself, making you think you're independent and then he's got you. <laughs> and, and for sure, you're probably going to start doing what you didn't want to do. I am. I just, oh, you go for it. You sure? Okay. And just, you know, it's interesting. Just we all do have, you know, people in my case too, you know, related people that are just from the secular end. They love God. That mindset again, I've got to do it myself. I've got to do it myself. And then when they can't or they fail, guess who they get mad at? Not Satan. See, so, but Satan is behind it. So yeah. Satan's all, yeah, good, got him. Yeah, it's it's all it's all the deception, all and that's that's the battle. Thank you, God. The battles that we fight are not of flesh and blood. It really is of the spirit and the mind. Yeah, it's a good scripture. Wow. Yeah. yeah I remember um, came back to my mind when you were talking to Chris. Um, Watchman Nee. He he once shared the a story where a similar thing. A guy was struggling with certain areas and certain quote quote sins and stuff and. And but he kept trying to focus. The focus was cutting off the fruit, the sin, the fruit. And watch when he was saying, the whole tree was cut by the root. You're focusing on that fruit, when the reality is the very tree that produced that fruit is dead. Right. You're so you're sitting there trying to cut off the fruit and stop the fruit from happening, which is the sinful expression or the the act. When the fruit, the root. The whole tree was cut off. Yeah. So reckon yourself dead to sin. To sin. Reckon yeah. yourself dead. I have been crucified. That that whole tree is dead, yeah. and that's the tree that the uh, naturally produced the sins. Right. And um, then there's another one where he says people have quoted and I've quoted it and and I I began to look at it in a different way. It's like, you know, the one where they say I must increase, he must increase, I must decrease. Sometimes yes. the focus on me decreasing myself. Yeah. That's still independent self. Okay, I gotta decrease. So I gotta decrease. Yeah. I gotta decrease. So you know, you're still it's back I. on you. Yes, that's another one. People, yeah, I used true. to give into that scripture too. I, I go, what can I do to make myself less so that he can be more? Well, that you know, and then I start to realize the more of him coming forward is because he brings me through hard stuff, and I the hard stuff makes me just bow down and fall and collapse because I can't. Oh my gosh, I cannot mm -hmm. handle this. I can It's like I want to over and over. I want to sock this person, but I don't want to, and I want to, and it's like I I can't do nothing. Though it's like, and but there is that trap of that's one scripture. People take it and they, it's back to the trying again. Yes. <laughs> the the eyes coming forward, the big eye. I must decrease now. Yeah, and the other one like that, bro. It's um, unless you lose your life, you know, if you, you don't find it. So people, okay, I got to lose my life, but the life you lose is a false self. It's the deluded self, that self that thinks you're independent, that can live your own life. That's a false satanic lie that was in you before you were a Christian, <laughs> that, that false self is what you lost. That striving self, mm. that striving deluded self, which wasn't you, is what you lost. So, yeah, when you, the more you recognize, oh, you, you, you let go of that striving self, that's not who I am. And, oh, Lord, you're, you're my true self. You're the one living. You know, then you find your life, which is Christ. Christ, who's your life? Abundant life. Abundant life. Repentance. What's that? And that's re kind of re what repentance yeah. is. Change, Change of mind. mind. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so, then you guys, it's so crazy. You go through that period where you all of a sudden see Christ... You know, you're living by the life of another. Terry Bennett, who's a kind of very supernatural um, prophetic guy, and I didn't even know him, but he came to a meeting I was in, and all of a sudden he goes, he looks at the crowd and he goes, um, quit trying to live for God. Wow. Realize 
He lives for you mm. and through you. I'll say that one more time. It's a bomb. <laughs> Quit trying to live for God. Realize he lives for you mm-hmm. and through you. And then he turned, and I'm in the back. There's about 60 people. It says, right, Bill? Oh, I love it. He, I don't even know him. Not what? But, no, yeah, I, I, I like never met him. Directly. <laughs> he looked at it, he, he realized How that... How did he know your name? Uh, I, love the he's, Lord. He's, he's just the, the Lord. Christ. Yeah, and he knew that the I was into the Christ, union with Christ. He made it and personal he, at that point. He made it, yes. Bam. Yeah, I thought, whoa. And I remember Rick Wright, the pastor, is turning and looking at me like, why did he say <laughs> that to Bill? How did he know that about Bill? <laughs> that was crazy. That was kind of wild. But anyway, so... Um, so, so he lives for you and through you. He lives for you and, and to take it you. further, like Bill said, as you. And yep, That's thanks, crazy. Tom. And the bomb yeah. is he lives through you, for you, as you, as if it's you. But the wink is it's really him mm. living. Love it. But it's and so then you operate, start just being yourself. Mm-hmm. You start going, you're going to teach your tennis. Just being you, mm-hmm. in, in one sense, almost forgetting God, in one sense, you're just doing your tennis, teaching your tennis, but underlying, there's a knowing, inward knowing, that it's really Him living as you. There's an underlying consciousness that it's not you, that it's He as you. Now, only the Holy Spirit can really make that clear to you. Mm-hmm. And so for a long time, I was in this third stage, you guys. And all of a sudden, Norman said, you're going to get yourself back. Mm. And I didn't want to get myself back because that striving self, I couldn't, you know, I, could, I didn't want to be that person anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm. And, I, and that self that I didn't want to be was not even me. That's the, mm. that's the deluded self, Satan's delu- delusion. I call it the phantom self, a phantom self. I thought I was this bad person, a striving person, and that wasn't even me. That was Satan's lie. And um, so, you guys, all of a sudden, I, I can't, ex- I don't know how I could say this, but this, the spirit, um, there was like a, a, a fixed inner knowing inside me when all of a sudden there was like a an awareness as Tom said earlier a realization oh he's living as me uh, is it me or is it Jesus living as oh it's Jesus as me I can't even you can't even figure it out in your head but you can in, inwardly know it you can inwardly know it but you can't get, you can't get that inward knowing the Holy Spirit brings it to you. you j- so all I did, he said, all you can do is, is speak the word of faith, say, Lord, I trust that you're the real me. You're living in me as me. It doesn't look like it's you living as me. I'm not performing like it's you living as me. Um, I, I, um, it doesn't, I look in the mirror, it doesn't look like it's you there. <laughs> the Bible talks about looking in the mirror and who do you see? Well, I saw just me. But it wasn't. It was Christ as me when I looked in the mirror. Yeah. I started seeing, oh, that's, wow, that's Jesus as me. Wow. You know. Yeah, exactly, Paul. Yeah. Being transformed into that image going glory. Right. I think that's like the stages, too, is almost like the glory to glory, almost. Like oh, that's a good point. Progression of expression, dying and then expressing. It's like I that. think when you're moving like that too, and you express it, I think it manifests and people people see it at some level. Oh, it's yeah. like that mm-hmm. real, right? Yep. Like mm-hmm. they might not click with it, but if you said that and said, "Oh, that's Jesus as me," that's Jesus operating as me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So connect deep, with yeah. them at some level. Like, yes. Because it's truth. It's right? truth. Mm-hmm. It's truth. Yeah. Yeah. Good, bro. Yeah. And only as, as, I mean, on behalf of the only female here and others too, I mean, that's very nice for just the masculine energy that people think this is all Christ, you know, energy in, in the male. And I'm like, okay, well, what about us? 
you know, I mean, that's that's Christ in us. Christ yeah. in you. I mean, Remember too, he says, Paul said that in Christ there's neither male nor female. Mm. That's what he said. In okay. the spirit, there is no male nor female. They argued with Jesus. Well, whose wife is she going to be in the afterlife? Well, he says, you know, in the afterlife, they'll be like the angels. There's not going to be, you know, <laughs> wife, man, married woman, you know, because it's no male or female. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is, you know. That's why we could be called the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm a dude, man. When you talk about I'm a bride, man. <laughs> well, you're thinking and, according to the natural. And the son of God, but uh, that's, God. Right. that's right. That's right. Well, man. that's why I don't, you mean, I don't know if it's controversial. I've always seen God as both male and female. Yes. And that's not mm -hmm. accepted in the church, so I try to yeah. be quiet. Oh, yeah. But that's God not is male and female. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yes, thank Female you. aspects of yes. God. It comes out of him, just like the woman came out of Adam's side. Mm -hmm. But the man, Adam, Adam and the woman came out of God when he breathed into it. But the first, it's interesting that when God breathed into the first man, he created man in his image and likeness. But when he created man in his image and likeness, you can immediately think, that was Adam, so it's just male. But no, when he created, he was seeing both a man and a woman. Man to him was woman and man yeah. together. And yeah. remember, he made them in their image. Yeah. So sometimes like when it. I would say like, oh, Father, mm. Mother, God, I'm all, oh boy, that there's a controversy. And I'm like, no, guys, I'm not a part of any other faith. Trust me, I'm not a part of the goddess. I don't want anything like the death. But God mm. is both my mother and father completely. Yeah, yeah he's El, El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit's referred to it as she all the time in the Bible. Wisdom. You know, wisdom is I she. Know. Yes. But so, yes. But even at the church, too, they, they just think, oh, what are you doing? Hmm, God is not a female. God and is then not that's a where you get the whole, the whole fight against women in ministry. Well, you're thinking according to the natural again if you're saying women in ministry shouldn't be in ministry. Yeah. You're thinking according to male and female from an earthly perspective, God doesn't care. God raises up female apostles that right. are really sons, yeah. and, you know, they're right. apostles. Women prophets, they're not male or female. It's not about a male or female thing. It's about God expressing himself through them in an office. Right. Whether they're a woman or a man. Right. right. Yeah, the spirit you... testifies to our spirit that we're children of God. There's no gender in it at no. all. Just like what I was going to say. You can walk in that as well as I can. Like I could see that on anybody who's walking like that and said, because you recognize it in the spirit. Like his spirit testifies our spirit. All of a sudden we're children of God. Like it will operate really well if you're talking to somebody who is a children of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But somebody who's not, it might be a little like, they wouldn't get it, but God can speak on it and go, there is something there. They can see it also. The demons see it. It's spirit, yeah. right? So it's we got to recognize it as spirit. Cause yeah, it's so it's funny today, Paul. I was, and to, from what, Tom, what you said and what Tom said, that I talked to Sylvia today and she was saying, yeah, Bill, God and what you were God has male and female aspects, but it's not gender because when he when Adam was created, uh, God was male and female had it male and female female aspects of himself right. before he created in the spirit, right? So he had Adam, like you said, Eve wasn't even. Out yet. Out yet. <laughs> she didn't express. No. It was an expression. No, there. but. Uh, an expression. So Sylvia was talking about that very thing today about in the spirit. Mm -hmm. God has male and female aspects, but it's not really like in a sense, maybe like gender the way we think of it. In right. Expression, you know, on, as humans. Because in the church with the same struggle with women in ministry and everything like that and the whole context of it, yeah. the men have to go through the book of Song of Solomon. I think well, we'll... I'm going to get Yes, I Am. Let's start with that one. Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one, Paul. Uh, when Sylvia comes out, I know which I know. Oh, yeah, which, maybe I'll just wait for that. You know, she's gonna she's gonna send. I think she's gonna send a bunch of her books, and uh, knowing her, that'll be she, she'll giving she'll be giving them out. She, oh she, my god! She's always like she just gives wow. everything away. How old is she? I think she's eighty two uh -huh. or eighty three, or uh -huh. but you know you wouldn't know it when you see her. Awesome. Yeah, so she's she's getting younger. She really is, because we, 
one of the things she and I always talk about, you guys, is is being one with Jesus. And the first question I asked Norman Grubb was, Norman, I couldn't believe he answered it. Just did I already say this? Um, I waited for like an hour to talk to him, and this one lady and Norman would always just be kind of passed out in the spirit, and and this one gal Eunice kept talking to him and talking to him about all this this what seemed to me frivolous things, not to her. And he he just <laughs> pop up, go, oh yes, wonderful, my dear. Then he'd pass out, and she'd just go on for another fifteen minutes. Yeah. And, and I was sitting there with this one little question. Of course, my showed my selfishness. And so I anyway, I just kind of finally relaxed, and then finally Eunice left, and he, he said, "Oh, would you? Did you have a question, my dear?" I said, "Yeah, Norman." I, I said, "We're not just one with him in the spirit, are we?" He said, "Oh no, my dear, you're one with him." I always like to imitate him. You're mm-hmm. one with him, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. I knew he would say exactly those oh, words, oh, no. and why oh, would no. I know? You know, and I so anyway, so that's the oneness of the last that's part. the oneness, the last stage, oh, yeah. The I repair it, right? The I, because that's the right self, that's the right self, right? Where he comes back united to you, spirit, soul, and body in a fixed union, and there's a fixed inner consciousness where you know that you know it's not you living, it's him living, but it is you, he's living as you. <laughs> so that, that and that's uh, why she's so young and in yes, age, and getting younger, yeah, and getting younger because she believes the wow. Holy Spirit is quickening her body. Yeah. So wow. he's yeah. not only did he rise as us, he ascended as us, and he was the glorified Jesus as us. So, mm-hmm. in other words, he wow. united him. His glorified body is united to our physical body. So we can believe for, even though we're not Amen. fully gl- glorified That's yet, so we can believe it's quickening our body right wow. now. Yeah, so, that. Well, that yeah. was F. Scott Gerald who wrote that um, short story, Benjamin Button, that they made that film. Oh, of. yes. But that guy was touching on some of that in that short story. That's right. You know? That's right. I forgot about that. But that last, <laughs> the, the last two parts of the life... <laughs> I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified. I no longer live. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Um, mm. The life I now live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son. Another okay. good one. Wait, there's five of them. Wasn't there five of them? He said five, yeah. I feel there's like the five revelation eyes. is like... The five what? Eyes? Yeah, they're in this scripture, there's... Okay... I can't remember. They are say, essentially well, you usually five. do the four eyes, he but she said, said there were five, five, and I couldn't remember what the fifth one was. Yeah, there are essentially, he say, she says, there are essentially five eyes in Galatians 2.20, although the fourth and the fifth eye are the same eye. Yeah, because oh, it's the, the evolution, the, yeah. the one to the eye to the eye, from eye being wrong self to eye being right self. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the Christ eye united to uh, the right. little the little human spirit eye right. as one. Right. So that's so that's that's, that's, that's a united one eye, third. one eye. Yeah. Wow. A fixed eye. So it says this shows an evolution of man's consciousness yep. being radically transformed from believing the lie of independence to the truth of union with Christ who sets us free. We move in a conscious knowing from the mind of the flesh to the mind of the spirit and from the wisdom of the world to the wisdom of God. All understanding and insight comes from comparing opposites. The one opposite gaining its de- definition and distinction from the other. Hot cannot be known except by its opposite, cold. You say yes to doing this, but hidden in that yes is a no to doing that and so on. Consciousness is realized the same way. We have a consciousness of oneness with Christ because of the mind of the spirit has radically replaced the mind of the flesh. And the darkness of our fallen consciousness is swallowed up in the light of the glorious truth of the gospel. That's powerful. That's powerful. Send that to me. Because I've been trying to take a photo of it. You kept scrolling it up. Oh, okay, yeah, send it to Yeah, the mind of the flesh would be that independent self thinking you're just first of all. Should have taken a video. Like when when people say, I'm just human. Yeah, 
you're not just human. No. You know, you're not, you've never been just human. That's, that's the lie. Yeah, you've always been, you've never operated yourself. You've always been operated by an, a spirit. You've always mm-hmm. been united to a spirit, one spirit or the other. But uh, that's, that's why he That's the big eye side of trying. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I'll just. Just say this last thing, you guys, because I, I like to kind of just so so the major function of the human would be to receive or contain and then express another. Mm-hmm. So that's the major function. So when I said you're a helpless expression of somebody else, you're actually expressing him. So, um, yeah. So. Uh, that's the major function of the human. So I was living as a dysfunctional human because I thought it was up to me to live the life. You know, I had no idea. No, my only function was to contain the one who could live the life and express that person. I'll I'll just say this last thing. So just want to make sure you know I'm not saying you're God. But Norman would say on occasion, um, you're, you're Christ in your unique human form. Mm -hmm. You know, you're Christ in your Chris form. You're Christ in your Tom form. Mm -hmm. You're Christ in your Paul form. And I remember this religious spirit came came to Norman once in a meeting and said, you're saying you're God. He he said, no, I'm not saying. He said, you said you're Christ in your Norman form. He said, no, my dear. Uh, I said, I'm Christ in my Norman form. In my Norman form, the form is not Christ, my dear. So he was, but he was a unique, there was a oneness where he was literally, Christ was expressing himself by that unique human form. And when he said that, that so thrilled me, and I didn't even get it. But again, my spirit leapt inside me. Hmm. So... So just to let you know, he was not saying you're God in some weird way. He would always make that really clear. <laughs> but, yeah, like when he created Adam, he created Adam in his image and likeness. In his image and likeness. But Adam had a specific form, like he said. He said, but out of Adam came every human being. And you have black, Chinese, Mexican, Italian, you know, Ethiopian. You have, you know, Middle Eastern. Tri- they're all different. Look, even their facial features mm-hmm. are different. That's the form, but yes. it's the form of he comes in all those forms and he expresses all those forms. He created all those forms. He comes, right. in, so it's like you, you know, it's not like a clone and stuff. And, no, and you know, no, it's not it's not sameness. Yeah, it's not <laughs> sameness. It's you, you, unity with distinction. Yeah, mm. we're distinct. We're 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 the finite ones. He's the infinite one. Mm-hmm. We're the creatures. He's the creator. He's the divine, we're the human. That was so, what did you say, uniquely? What was that, uniquely? Um, uh, uniquely uh, Uh-oh. Oh, uh, oh, you are Christ in your unique human form. Yes. Or, or like I said, this is, you are Christ in your Tom form. And then you have the word... Or uh, expression. Whatever. Even the word Christian. Mm-hmm. Where'd that come from, and, and what does that mean? You're a Christian. I know what it means. what it means? I know what it means. Do you know, know what, what it means? means? Little Christ. Yeah. Right? Yeah, little Christ. I've heard that. That actually started off as an insult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a Christ demeaning not. Roman term. Mm-hmm. Because everybody was like, so living out such an expression of Christ <laughs> yeah. that they're like, you little Christ. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Man. We're going to see that again. Yeah. Wow. Man, thank you.